This film presents Mao Zedong in a number of his comparatively rare public appearances during the last 27 years. These clips were gathered from various sources and arranged in chronological order with identifying narration. In Yunnan, Shanxi, during the 1930s, Mao Zedong led the Chinese Communist Party through a decade of disorder and war. American efforts to compromise the long nationalist communist hostility failed during the mid-1940s. This shot of Mao was taken in 1945 as he arrived in Chongqing with then Ambassador Patrick J. Hurley for a conference with Chiang Kai-shek. Civil war began in the spring of 1946, and by 1948, the communists were in control of much of the northern part of the country. Crossing of the Yangtze symbolized the end of nationalist rule. The communists matched success in military operations with activity in the political and propaganda fields. Here, in the latter part of 1949, Mao prepares for takeover at this meeting of the People's Political Consultative Conference. He called upon the delegates to establish a coalition government. The Chinese people will also see that the destiny of China is in the hands of the Chinese people themselves. China is now like the moving sun rising from the east, which brightens the earth with its light. We shall establish a great, strong, and real People's Democratic Republic of China. The Republic of the past has been a falsehood. It had a good name, but lacked essence. Now we shall have a People's Democratic Republic of China, which is real both in name and essence. Long live the People's Democratic Republic of China. Long live the democratic coalition government. Long live the great unity of the people of the whole country. The war ended a short time later with the complete defeat of the nationalists. Mao Zedong was ready to proclaim the new People's Republic of China to the world. This ceremony marking the first five years of Mao's rule is about to begin. It is 1 October 1954. This was the day of Sino-Soviet rapprochement, and Khrushchev and Bulganin were honored guests on the platform at Tiananmen. The Korean War had ended 15 months before, and in his keynote address the previous day, John Lai had referred to China's desire to live in peaceful coexistence with other nations. Kung Tsuhai, Korean War commander, who later was to fall from grace delivered the commemorative address. 1 October 1959, and the Chinese Communists are celebrating their 10th anniversary. Khrushchev, who had been visiting President Eisenhower at Camp David, was a late arrival. Ho Chi Minh was also an honored guest. The theme of the celebration was China's progress and self-sufficiency under socialism. Although these scenes on the platform at Tiananmen do not suggest that a rift was developing in the Sino-Soviet relationship which was to break into the open a year later. But on that day, Mao and Khrushchev enjoyed the hours-long parade. It is 30 September, 1964, eve of the 15th anniversary celebration at the Great Hall of the People, and Mao greets Prince Xianuk, Malian President Modiba Keita, Congolese President Masemba Dembat, 
and many other foreign guests who have come to participate in National Day ceremonies. In his toast, Mao pledges solidarity of the Chinese people with the people of the world. At this 15th anniversary, Mao Zedong and the People's Republic of China have reached a pinnacle of authority and influence with aspirations to third world leadership. Mao's toast and the parade the following day are symbolic of the mood of the Chinese communists at this time. Two weeks later, 16 October 1964, Communist China detonated her first atomic bomb. The 20 kiloton explosion brought China into the world's atomic club. It also radically altered the world's view of China's potential in international power relationships. This clip is from an official Chinese release. Two months later, Mao arrives at the first session of the Third National People's Congress. Party and government officials like Liu Xiaoqi and Madame Sun Yat-sen. Old revolutionaries like Zhu Du. Eager young zealots, men and women, everyone attended this assembly to discuss every aspect of China's domestic and international situation. It was the last important meeting before the Cultural Revolution that the old political lineup appeared. Such people as former President Liu Xiaoqi former party secretary Tung Xiaoping and former Peking mayor Peng Chun were among the more conspicuous casualties of the Cultural Revolution. A total of over 2,800 delegates attended the plenary session and pledged themselves to spread the revolutionary spirit and transform the country. They greeted and were greeted by Mao, who was accompanied by a female attendant. The chairman characteristically enjoyed himself. The Congress ended 4 January 1965. Mao arrived to preside at the Ninth Party Congress during April 1969. This was the first party congress in 13 years and marks the end of the Cultural Revolution. Mao is 75 at this time. For the first time in many years, his voice is recorded on film soundtrack. The chairman retains his Sikhunanese accent and observers noted his resonant tone.
Like much television monitored material from foreign sources, the next three clips have lost resolution in processing. Clouds are smaller at the 1970 May Day, and in contrast to the 1964 celebration, the guest list has shrunk. The new Kunal seems to enjoy his association with Mao, is conspicuous on the platform. Mao, whose most recent honor is to be named leader of the nation in the army, remains seated for a time in the reception room adjoining the platform at Tiananmen greeting admirers. He appeared refreshed when he returned to the platform a short time later. The Chinese were jubilant at this time over the recent launching of a musical satellite. The king entertains a Romanian delegation headed by Nicolae Ceausescu during the first part of June 1971. This was Ceausescu's first visit as head of state and capped the recent warm-up of Sino-Romanian relations that had started the previous December when the Chinese granted Bucharest a large, interest-free loan. This reception took place during the early part of the nine-day stay. On 8 October 1971, Mao met with Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. The substance of this meeting related to the granting of a long-term loan to Ethiopia. The Japanese commentator in this clip contrasts the appearance of the two rulers, who are almost the same age, Haile Selassie being older by two years. The Ethiopian emperor left for Iran shortly after this visit. 